Hey what's up guys, welcome back to Aimstone channel. Let us go ahead and take a look what the hell is going on with the Bitcoin market. As of the time this recording BTC is trading at around $21,400. We have been trending sideways in these 4 consecutive days, so we have been flat. Yes, it feels kinda bad that we were at $25,000, now we're back to $21,000. But the good news is we're still trading sideways with this sideways channel. Bitcoin fear in grid index does not look that good. Now we're back to extreme fear. We are at 25. Yes, for the past couple of weeks we were in fear and even at one point we were in neutral. This is when BTC was at $25,000. Well, what can we expect? When BTC drops, people get very and very fearful. And one of the reasons why BTC and entire stock market continues to drop is because DXY, which is dollar index, continues to rally. Now DXY reach new annual high. Those of you who do not know, DXY is just the strength of US dollar compared to basket of other fiat currencies. And guess what? When all the risk on assets go on sale, DXY goes up. And the main reason why is because people sell on those risk on assets and they buy dollar. So that's why DXY goes up. The opposite is true as well. When DXY goes down, the risk on assets goes up. So we do not want to see the strength of US dollar. In fact, we want the opposite. We want the weakness of US dollar, which means the risk on assets, the stock market, the Bitcoin, real estate will go up. And that's what we want. Maybe not real estate, but definitely stock market and Bitcoin. Guess what? It seems like all fiat currencies in fact are crashing into US dollar. The euro has fallen below parity with US dollar, driven is the lowest level in 20 years and ending one to one exchange rate with US dollar. As we can see, as of right now, one euro can only buy you 0.99 dollars, which means euro drops in purchasing power while dollar is increasing. I remember not so long ago, 1 euro could buy you 1.2 dollars, so euro was 20% more valuable than US dollar. But it seems like it is changing a bit, and the main reason is because there is a lot of fear and uncertainty in the European economy, especially in geopolitics as well as energy prices. Over there, energy prices and inflation continue to skyrocket. Not so long ago, UK announced that they have over 10% CPI numbers. And Citigroup predicts there will be over 18% CPI numbers in UK by January. This is crazy. Imagine having official CPI numbers at 18%. If official numbers would be at 18%, it means the real inflation will be doubled. Imagine having the real inflation 36%. This is nuts. That's why we need Bitcoin. Speaking of the crude oil, I continue to look at the crude oil. And as of right now, we are slightly went up. As of the time this recording, crude oil is at around $94 per barrel. Not so long ago, we were at $86 per barrel. That would be a new annual low. But since then, we went up a bit, which is not a good thing. I use crude oil as a proxy for CPI numbers. For example, in June, 30 days average price for the crude oil was at around $116. And therefore, CPI numbers in the United States at least reached 9.1%, which was 40 years high. And since June, crude oil dropped a bit, and average 30 days price for July was at around $105. And therefore, CPI dropped respectively as well. CPI dropped from 9.1% to 8.6%, which is very good thing. At September 10 or so, another CPI numbers for August will be released. And I want to see 30 days average price for August below $90 per barrel if I want to see decently lower CPI numbers. Yes, as of right now, the current average price is definitely below $90 per barrel. But do not forget, there is still 7 days left to be in August. So let's hope the crude oil will dip below $90 again to have a decent CPI numbers. Now, let's take a look at some Bitcoin charts. This first chart represents BTC number of addresses holding at least 0.1 BTC. As we can see, they reach new all-time high. Now there are more than 3.77 million addresses holding at least 0.1 BTC. Yes, 0.1 BTC doesn't look like it's a lot of money. 0.1 BTC would be slightly over $2,100. But the good news is, it still tells us that how early we still are. 
only 3.77 million unique addresses hold 0.1 BTC. United States population is around 330 million people, and the global population approaches to 8 billion people. So yes, this is indeed a very good metric that tells us how early Bitcoin still is. Another interesting chart. This chart represents Bitcoin rainbow price chart. As we can see, the lowest level of this rainbow is in this blue color, and according to this chart it is fire sale. On a few times in history, BTC price drops to this fire sale which is in this blue color. First time took place at around 2015 when BTC was down to $100. Then it happened during 2018 bear market where BTC was around $3,200 as well as happened during the corona crash and now it is happening once again. So if you still have cash, maybe it's time to buy some more BTC. This chart is probably my favorite chart of the day. It represents top stable coins and of course Bitcoin price action. As we can see, they have more or less inverse correlation. When stable coins goes down, it means Bitcoin price goes up. And of course, it makes a lot of sense. It means people sell these stable coins and they buy Bitcoin. And the opposite is true as well. When Bitcoin price goes down, stable coins goes up. Usually, when people sell Bitcoin, they sell them into stable coins. And guess what is happening right now? As we can see, the stable coins is inverting downwards, which means BTC already went up a bit, and hopefully, if this trend will continue, the stable coins will continue to go down, then of course, BTC price will continue to rise. This is definitely a very bullish chart. Another fantastic chart. This chart compares what happens at the bottom of every single Bitcoin cycle. For example, in 2014 and 2016, this is what happened at the exact bottom of the Bitcoin market. The 50 days moving average that is in blue cross above 200 days moving average that is in red. Whenever this happened, the momentum changed and BTC started another bull market. The same thing happened in 2018 and 2020. When BTC was around $3,500, the 50 days moving average went above 200 days moving average and BTC went into another bull market. And guess what? Something similar is happening right now, but at least not yet. We haven't had this confirmation yet. But as soon as this blue line, which is 50 days moving average, we cross above 200 days moving average that is in this red line, this will be a very bullish signal that it's time to go all in, at least in my opinion. Look at this guy. This guy was complaining the BTC stabilized at some price level. At that point it was $14. Guess what, we are going sideways at this current moment as well. And he got tired of waiting so he took a loss and got his cash back. If you do not want to be this guy, try to have a long term vision and patience. Patience is the main key. To have a patience, try not to look at Bitcoin chart and Bitcoin price every single minute. In fact, I would not recommend looking at Bitcoin price every single day. For me, I have to do that because I am content creator. But personally, if I would not make Bitcoin videos, most likely I would not be checking Bitcoin price every single hour. And that's very hyper impulsive. When you look at all these slides flashing red and green, it makes you to take action. And of course, this is not what we want to do. We want to be very patient. This is very good for your health and this is very good for your wealth. So stay patient, my friends. It seems like the most popular NFTs continue to crash. In fact, I have never been NFT fans for the first place. But maybe this is the lesson that people can learn something. Since the peak of the market in May, those monkeys, the price has fallen of high of just over $400,000 to around $100,000 today. That is 75% decline. Yes, 75% decline does not seem that much. But guess what? Why would anybody buy NFTs in the first place? NFTs have endless supply and it has limited demand. The only people who make money in the NFT market those who create those NFTs. To create NFTs takes literally nothing. Just some knowledge how to code and that's it. And you can make shitload of money out of the people who will end up holding the bags. And some people can say, yes, these monkeys have limited supply. But do they really? If they will be built on Bitcoin, then maybe you can buy that argument. However, they will build on Ethereum and many other protocols like Solana. And guess what? Nor Ethereum nor Solana have limited supply. And they also not decentralized. If there is a central authority, they can manipulate the monetary supply. And therefore, they can
can create endless amount of those monkeys. So therefore that's one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of NFTs. Now let's take a look at this video with this technical analyst who correctly predicted Bitcoin Thumb before will explain what will happen next. Let's take a look. All right, ludicrous levels. Let's apply the same uh, methodology of analysis to Bitcoin. We had, a, yeah. we had a drop of ludicrous levels earlier today. Um, a lot of that drop has rebounded. Now we're down only about 1%. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about what happened in the last uh, 48 hours or so, and then we can uh, proceed on to your uh, short-term and medium-term analysis and targets. Yeah. So, so what we saw is Friday when the equity market sold off, you got this nasty candle. It did close below this channel. So look at the beauty of this channel here, how we've been hovering up and down inside of it really since June. But the negative here is that we saw a close below. Now you haven't confirmed, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a very, very nasty little pattern formation. And it's likely we're going to go retest this yellow trend line here, which happens to be the high from 2017 right here. That's going to be a big line in the sand. If we break that, then you see that move down that I've been calling for as my secondary target. You know, my first target was 20,000. We talked about it last year in Dubai when, when I was there in, in October 2021. We said 20,000. Now I say it's going to actually go lower than that. Next stop is going to be 12 to 13,000. So we are headed lower and uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be a rough road along the ways here. Mm -hmm. Rough rows along. Okay, so well, twelve thousand dollars is not too terrible a drop from. I know that sounds bad. I mean, twelve thousand dollars is a level we haven't seen that for years. But from current yeah. levels, it's uh, in Bitcoin terms. You know, we've seen worse, right? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's only about fifty percent, right? It's yeah, only about fifty percent. We can't, we can't, we can't, you know, we can't, uh, we, we, we can't, uh, <laughs> we can't discount the fact that we've already been down seventy percent. What's another fifty? True. Um, right. Right. And the scheme, and you're right on this, right, is that, you know, from the drop from 69 to 21 and change, if it's only got another really about 9,000 to go, that's not that crazy. I agree. All right. I'm not advocating for people to uh, start buying on a 50 percent dip right now. I'm just saying, you know, on the, in the bigger in the bigger term perspective, if you if you're somebody like, for instance, like Mike, Mike Novogratz. Uh, right. CEO of Galaxy, he's uh, a couple weeks ago, he made headlines by saying that he still thinks Bitcoin's long term projection or potential is $500,000 a coin. And if you're of the yeah. view that Bitcoin will eventually hit half a million dollars a coin, I'm not saying well, I'm just quoting Mike here. You know, if you agree with Novogratz, then what's the difference? $20,000, $12,000, your buy in at this point doesn't really make a difference if you think of it that way. Right. And, and, and to be fair, that he's, he's correct on that. And, and I actually have that same long term view. I'm a big long term bull. I'm just a shorter term macro and now, you know, macro economist looking at the cycles and everything like that. So the beauty of 12 to 13,000, it gets us to that 80 to 85 percent correction that Bitcoin has done every single cycle. So that kind of gives us a basis of what to look for. It's also a strong technical support. But you're right. I mean, if you're a long term investor and you're not going to look at it for 10 years or five years, there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to, this is the key, right? You have to be able to weather the emotional storm because I know a lot of investors out there, they might buy in at 22 or 21. And when they're down 40% at 12, they might panic and unload because you're going to hear a lot of negativity out there. And if you, you have to be able to control that and, and shut it out, and then you're okay to do that. But if you're someone who's very emotional and you're going to exit the trade at that point, and then it goes to 50,000, then a hundred thousand, that's not a good scenario for you to be in. So if you have emotional control, that's fine. Start inching in. I also advocate for dollar cost averaging. Buy a little here at 21, buy a little bit more at 18, buy some more at 15 and so forth versus just going all in at one specific level. Yes, we know that he correctly predicted BTC price when it was at around about $40,000 and he said it will dump to $20,000 and possibly even lower. Now he predicts that BTC can drop to around $13,000, however he remains very bullish in the long term. So let's say if the next few years BTC will be at around $500,000, does it really matter if you bought BTC at $13,000 or $20,000? Personally, I do not think it will make a huge difference. So yes, dollar cost averaging is indeed a very good strategy to stack more sets and be wealthier over time. Let me know what you guys think, comment below and subscribe.